eventually, and it took decades for this to become clear, that unity vision failed. I mean, it flat failed. I mean, what Mr. Campbell envisioned did not happen. Yeah, yeah, his movement grew rapidly for a few decades, and that gave him a, a growing confidence that, boy, this was going to happen. It's going to unite the world, not only in the one true church, but it's going to unite the world, bring a, an era, a millennial era of peace, prosperity, and fulfillment. I mean, that didn't happen. And there are several things at work here. No, first was that in America, the tide was running in the opposite direction, that is toward, toward disunity, toward more and more denominations rather than less and less, uh, because in America, everybody was free. You didn't have a state church controlling things. Everybody was free to invent their own church. And if they could, if, if they could market it, if they could preach it up, and draw people, they, they would be successful. What was it, the year 1840, in the 1840s, a guy named John Weinbrenner published a book on America, sort of a catalog of American denominations. At that time, he, he tre treated 53 different Christian denominations. That was 1848, 45, somewhere in there. Of course, by our time, what do we have? We have nearly 3,000 that are cataloged in J. Gordon Melton's recent multi-volume encyclopedia of American religion. I mean, I mean the, the whole trend has been toward uh, separation, been toward division, toward new churches being formed, new denominations arising. And that's been the unbroken story. Campbell's vision was going in the wrong direction, you might say. We understand why, and, and, and the dream of and the vision for unity is central to, to Jesus and to the New Testament. We, we, we long for that. We de desire that. And Mr. Campbell, very honestly, and in, and in some brilliant ways, sought to make it happen. But culturally, uh, it, it did not, and indeed probably could not, uh, by his terms. Uh, and to, secondly, I would say to... Um, to use the restorationist vision as a means to it was inherently problematic because the restoration vision in its other iterations over the centuries was a, a means of critique and separation most of, often, not of bringing mm -hmm. together. And um, so Mr. Campbell's joining of restoration and unity together yeah, it, it seemed to have promise and it had some success at first, but eventually it began to break apart. Uh, and Churches of Christ uh, took the more restorationist side of things and the search for truth. And the other side, the disciples of Christ focused more on the unity piece. Uh, and that's when this deep fracture in the movement uh, began to, uh, to widen. And by the late 19th century, uh, that that division was pretty much in place. Hmm. Um, and then I would say, uh, furthermore, the Civil War in the 1850s exacerbated all of this because, again, um, the war between the North and the South pitted people in the, the Restoration Movement itself against each other. And uh, I, I know Mr. Campbell was shocked. David Lipscomb here in Nashville was just dismayed and shocked. Uh, and it was a huge setback. And certainly out of that, Mr. Campbell's millennial vision for peace and prosperity uh, in America and beyond uh, simply collapsed. You know, here we are, uh, generations later. Uh, and it seems to me... Um, it's really way past time to think differently about the issue of unity. If you were to set the terms of unity, what would that look like? Like what, what is a feasible path to unity outside of just saying, Jesus knows who his people are and we're all united in spirit, whether we know who, who that is or not. There is truly unity in a theoretical sense or a re very real spiritual sense. But That's a great question, Matt. I mean, uh, I've pondered that a lot. Here's one piece to start with, <clears throat> it seems to me. And this, this is an insight that goes way back into our own heritage. 
although it was a very much a minority viewpoint. And, and that is a distinction between unity in Christ and union. Uh, this distinction was made by uh, Robert Richardson, a younger colleague of Alexander Campbell. It was also made by uh, Thomas, Thomas Campbell, Alexander's father, really, uh, where uh, the, the point was that when you were baptized uh, on the basis of one's faith, uh, one is made part of Christ. One enters into union with Christ and thereby enters into a, a kind of spiritual unity with your brothers and sisters who are also baptized into Christ. So that one, from right out of, out of the waters of baptism, uh, you come emerge with a unity in Christ, with baptized believers. Now, one quickly begins to experience um, the separations that are all around us the denominational traditions and separations. Um, but Richardson wanted to make the point that there is a fundamental basic unity in place. We're called thereby then to, to, to testify to that with our lives and our words and to work toward a more visible union of Christians, which will never happen. Richardson was, was there, will never happen this side of Christ's return. It will never happen fully because we're human beings, sinful human beings, who have a hard time getting along with each other and understanding one another. And we read scripture in our own cultural context in different ways and argue about all that. Uh, we can, he thought, uh, reach a somewhat more visible union if we work at it and testify to it and show the spirit of Christ emerging among us but um, it'll never happen finally and fully uh, this side of the second coming. Um, so that to me has been a, a, a helpful uh, perspective. Um, we want to testify to that. We want to work toward that. We want to try to exemplify it. And we want to do that at the grassroots level. It's not some bureaucratic top-down kind of enterprise as the 20th century ecumenical movement tried to make it. It happens in a church with its neighbors, its, its other churches in your community. It happens at the grassroots as you get to know one another and bless one another and receive their blessings and their gifts. That's where it seems to me this works itself out.